Hello everybody, Happy New Year. Um, I hope you all had a blissful one. Um, yeah. We hope that 2019 would be different in the way that um, you know, things have been, 2018 have been kind of rough. It's been a real transition for a lot of Gambians. Um, meanwhile, um, so this is my New Year's message to the Gambian people and to the President of the Republic of the Gambia. Um, we have a problem. We have a very, we have a crisis. And we don't only have a crisis of imagination, but we have a crisis of trust as a people. And um, we all remember when the coalition was campaigning in 2016, one of the mandates, of, one of the campaign um, um, promises that they made was that the flag bearer of the coalition government would be would serve for three years and then he will leave. I mean, um, I, I will refer to the, the, MOU, the MOU itself. Um, on the third section, on the, uh, on the tenure of the office and conduct of the flag bearer, the flag bearer will, A, head a transitional government for a period of three years. To be open, transparent, and accountable to all during the transition, you know, on and on. But the first thing that the the the, the the MOU stipulates is that he must be he must serve for three years. And another thing is he will not um, he will not see seek for re-election until after the five years after the transition period. I mean, I'm. You know, I'm, I'm just starting this conversation with this because this is going to be the foundation of, our con uh, of today's um, conversation with, with, with Gambians. Um, so we find that, uh, for example, now we all know that President Barrow is not going after the three years. And with that comes a major problem that we had faced as a people before this. You know, we should not be so amnesic. Like, we should not be in a state of amnesia, a historical amnesia, where we forget so easily. When Yaya Jame came, he promised Gambians that he would go back to the barracks. He's just a transitional um, leader. And actually, uh, it was a provisional council, the AFPRC. I mean, it was just there for a while, then they would leave. But then he stayed for 22 years. And Barrow promised Gambians. I mean, this is um, an agreement that he had signed um, uh, uh, with Gambian people, and he had said it, he had promised this. And we, let's forget about this whole, oh, his gentleman agreement, you know, it, he, was, he didn't really sign. What matters is that he had accepted this and he had taken it out of his mouth. There are tapes out there to say that he had accepted that he would step down after three years. And 2019 was going to be his third year in office this year. And after that, he is supposed to leave the office of the presidency and call for uh, an election or whatever would happen. But he has promised Gambian people that he was supposed to serve for three years. But, and when we have leaders who promise the people one thing, and when they get comfortable with power, they start changing that narrative. They start breaking the promise. I mean, recently we have seen uh, billboards springing around with promises made, promises kept with the bridge. Now. <laughs> Barrow will do us all right by keeping this one fundamental promise that he had done. Since he is the promise keeper, he should keep this promise. Um, after three years, honorably and dignify, you know, and, and, and in dignity, give back the office of the presidency to the Gambian people as per your promise during your, your, your campaign period. Now, a lot of people bring up arguments like, okay, so when he leaves for three, in three years, <coughs> what's going to happen? Uh, how, how is the TRRC going to work? How is the uh, Constitutional Commission going to work? Now, this is very clear. This is very simple. These are established institutions. And a change of presidency should not be able, should not affect those, the, the running of those institutions. You know, I mean, every advanced democracy had institutions running. And just because they have elections or a president stepping down, it doesn't stop those institutions from working. Why would Gambia be an anomaly in that regard? Why would Gambian institutions be able to work even in the absence of the president who created them? You don't create institutions so that they will work only when you are there and they will not work in your absence. Then what type of institutions, what type of community, what type of democracy are we trying to build? But the, the, the cusp of the message 
is that Barrow must go after three years for so many reasons. First of all, you made a promise to the Gambian people that you will go after three years. Second, you're clearly not competent to lead this country. Three, you have, um, you have, you have started to show us um, these tyrannical and these dictatorial tendencies that Gambians, we still have a trauma. You know, we're still healing from, from certain traumas. We saw the Farabah incident. These people have been protesting for almost a year for their community. You didn't address it. You didn't do anything about it. Your government has been conveniently ignoring the cries of the masses of our people. They only react after a crisis. So you, your government has become more like a crisis response a crisis-driven response only government, sort of, you know. You only respond when there's a crisis. And we can't have a leadership that only responds to our people after a tragedy, you know, after a problem, after a crisis, you know. We must be able to have proactive leadership. I mean, let's be honest, this is a very little country. You cannot say that you didn't hear these people um, protesting about this thing. And, and we saw how freedom of assembly was stifled upon. And there was, it was a build-up. If there was a culture of tolerance within the security system of the Republic of the Gambia, the death at Farabah would have been averted. But because there's this deep intolerance and suspicion towards protest, we saw what happened to Occupy Westfield, which was stifled and trampled upon by your government. We saw how um, every call for the masses to be able to assert their power has been stifled by your government. Three people died in a protest because of the failure of your security system. You talk about security reform, and you still have people serving in your system who have been complicit in the, in, in, in the tyranny of Yahya Jami. And not just the regular everyday people. No, people who have been complicit in the, in, in, in the tyranny, in the dictatorship of Yahya Jami. So... You have clearly shown us that you cannot lead this country, that you, you don't represent the wishes, the dreams, the aspirations of the Gambian people, or the, <coughs> the spirit of the, of, the, of the Memorandum of Understanding. Now, if you fail your promise, if a person fails their promise, how can we trust you with any other promise? Putting up billboards and saying you make promises and you keep them, it's not going to convince us otherwise. What is going to convince us is you to take a hard look within yourself and accept the fact that you've made a promise. Power is enticing, it is comfortable, it is convenient, especially in a setting where, you know, it's very easy to become, uh, you know, to be praised and to be, to be raised and, and, and make, a, you know, a, a, a society that makes you forget, you know, where you came from. Now, in this regard, where you came from is a coalition. And the coalition's mandate was that after three years, you serve in a transitional uh, phase that you will leave office. But you're not trying to do that. You, what you are trying to talk, you're talking about five years now as the Constitution. Forget the Constitution. Your moral obligation to the Gambian people is even deeper than your legal obligation. When you have a leader who cannot fulfill their moral obligation, what makes us believe, what would, what would convince us that you would be able to fulfill your legal obligation as the occupant of our presidency? So I, I think we should, we should be very clear in these times. Gambians should stand up at this time and say, you have, this president has to go. He has to honor his promise and leave office. When we keep tolerating leaders who come and promise us and do whatever they want after their promise, we will be in the same conundrum, in the same misery, in the same poverty, in the same dispossession. Because you know what's going to happen? They will do whatever they want. If, if you can get away with, with such thing, something so deep, so great, a promise, so, a promise that challenges the very edifice of your power, if you, can, if you can move away from that promise, what, may, what, what can convince us that you won't be able to uh, leave any promise? Maybe the TRRC wouldn't work. Maybe the CRC wouldn't work. Maybe the Human Rights Commission wouldn't work. Who knows? I mean, you failed the greatest promise, the, the promise we all remember. I mean, you talked about institutional reform, you talked about all these things, but the one promise that every Gambian remembers who was part of the coalition's campaign was that after three years you will vacate office. Maybe when the Memorandum of Understanding was being written, 
you guys thought you wouldn't win. But then all of a sudden you woke up one morning and there you are, bingo, you are the president-elect of the Republic of the Gambia. It happened. So now you must, as difficult as this might be for you, Mr. President, as, 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 as um, um, sad, as difficult, as gruesome this would be for you, you should still honor your pact with the Gambian people. You, when you step down after three years, you will be perhaps the most dignified Gambian or African president that I, the continent that I have ever seen. That a person, a, a president, who, a politician, who made a promise to his people and honored the promise and stepped down. You know how much of an honor that would be? I think, um, you know, we need to be honest with our leaders now. If it's going to cost us jail time or whatever, whatever the consequences might be, so be it. But we need to be very honest with our leadership. We must be able to tell our leaders the truth. And the truth here is that, Mr. President, after serving you three years, you must dissolve your cabinet and leave and call for an election. Anything else, if nobody is telling, if people are telling you that you should stay for five years, they are corrupting you. They are corrupting your mindset. They are corrupting your moral obligation towards the people, the suffering masses of this country. And if they, if you, if you hold on to this, oh, the constitution, five years. No, it's not about the constitution. It's about the moral obligation. The leader is not just a political leader. You are a moral leader. When you set an example, the people follow it. If a leader is corrupt, the whole country will be corrupt. If you fail your promises, the whole country can fail their promise. Because you, 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 you occupy the highest office. Gambian people pay their taxes. They subdue themselves to authority. All because they want a guided leadership. You think people cannot be ungovernable? People can wake up one day and say, okay, we don't want to be governed. The government goes. But people are submitting themselves to this law, this rule of law stipulations, just because they want development, they want democracy, they want sustainability, they want to have joyful communities, they want to have health care, they want to have education, they want to have these reforms that have been, they've been longing for. What have you done? After two years in office, what have you done? Talking about a bridge? It's all well and good, and infrastructure is good. But what about our educational system? This should be one of your main concerns. One of the things that we have suffered during the dictatorship is the running down and corrupting of the educational system. And you must know why this happens. <coughs> A dictator never wants people to, uh, uh, to be educated, to be critical thinkers, so he stifled <coughs> the... Um, sorry. He stifled um, the intellectual, uh, 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 <coughs> the intellectual growth, and the, inter the, the intellectual uh, uh, upbringing of Gambian people. So, if there is anything that you should have concentrated on as a president, it's two things, it's or three things. How do we create a sustainable? Uh, food secure system. Uh, food, how do we uh, create food security? How do we create um, a proper th that will work with uh, you creating a proper agricultural setup? How do we have proper health care? Our hospitals are devoid of proper medication. They are devoid of proper professionals. So in this time, this and and the other things would have been education. How do you uplift the next generation to be responsible, to be critical, to you know to create a critical mass? that understands what it takes to be a leader, what it, what, what, what it means to be a human being. Because when, when the people are not educated, when the people, you know, when the people are not uh, um, educated enough, they have no critical mindset, then they will become just sheep led to slaughter. But you didn't invest in these three categories that Gambians are, are, are being yearning for. No, you came through and you started making promises. Like every leader, you, you started going to rallies and started talking about, oh, we still have the Public Order Act here. You know, when these protesters, the laws that we had then are still here. This is what you said in Brakama. And, and I was ashamed because I I, I'm, I'm a movement leader. And this is the same law that killed Solo Sunday. They justified. This is the same law that they used to jail opposition leaders during the time of Yahya Jami. And you were not even ashamed to quote that. And to say that, 
that a lot of the Ayajami had used to kill our people. I mean, you talk about, oh, a bad law is still a law. What, what is that? What does that even mean? You know, I hear this rhetoric around the corridors of your government. It is still a law, the Public Order Act. We should follow it. When, when, um, when a law becomes uh, tyrannical and dictatorial, it becomes the responsibility of citizens to rise up against it. In South Africa, apartheid was legal, but the people rose up against it. They didn't say, oh, it's legal, oh, we have to follow the rule of law. No, they stood up against it because it was genocidal, it was oppressive, and they stood up against it, and they won. In America, the segregation was legal, but the people, the black people, they stood up against it. So what are you telling us? That because it's law, we should accept it? And this is what I want to tell Gambian people. If you accept a leader who will come and promise you stuff, and then abdicate that promise and stay away from it and try to leave the way he, you know, because he now have tasted the comfort of power and want to stay beyond that promise, that is a problem. And we should never agree to it. If we want to build a developed country, a country that will be a constellation amongst nations, a country that will be respected wide and far, a country that could be the front of the African revolution, a country that could be the foundation of what the dream of pan-Africanism, of African unity, the, a country that can be a beacon for human rights and democracy, if we want to build a country like that, we must be able to have leaders who are honor the, the promise that they, they make to the Gambian people, to their people. You cannot make promises and then you go around saying comfortably things that you know are outrageous. So this is the deal, President Barrow, is that you made a promise to the Gambian people, the document is still out there, and you should honor that agreement. As a human being, I mean, if you are a religion, if you believe in religion, that is, if you're a Muslim, which I suppose you are, because you swore upon the Quran when you were coming into power, is that you must honor your word. You must honor your promise. This is integral. This is the foundation. If you cannot keep your word, what else can you keep? Promises made, promises kept. Right on. Use that slogan to accept your three-year transitional period and abdicate the office of the President of the Republic of the Gambia and call for an election and dissolve your cabinet. We need competent leaders. We need leaders who are willing to develop this country. We, have, we need leaders who are responsible, who are trustworthy, who, are, who can keep their word, who are compassionate, who understand what the nuances, the subtleties, and the complexities of this Gambian uh, nation. A society... We need leaders who would be able to lead us to the promised land. We, we didn't ask for much. We wanted Yaya Jame gone. We achieved that. This was not your work. I think we, somebody needs to tell you that, that, that your, you didn't defeat uh, Yaya Jame. The Gambian people who went out to the polls, us, when we voted that day, we are the ones who took Yaya Jame out. It wasn't you who defeated him. So you should respect that mandate. That power is still here. The Gambian people who defeated a tyrant of 22 years without shedding blood, that power still resides in the hands of the masses. And if to honor that power, that abiding tradition of the power of the masses, is that you honor the promise you gave them and step down. Let's have leader. Let's, 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 let, let, let's start having this culture where you say something and you do it. As hard as it might get. We don't want another Yaya Jame. And the way things are going, it might end up like that. So it's important that, um, you know, we, we, we remember this. And Gambians, we need to stand up for this country. We need to honor this country. This is beyond political parties. This is beyond following political leaders. This is beyond religion. This is beyond ethnicities or regional uh, um, affiliations. Uh, it's not about that. This is about the soul of this nation. The soul of this nation that has been disillusioned for a long time. This Gambian land that has been weeping for a long time. <coughs> that has been losing her children to the high, med high waters of the Mediterranean. This, this has been using, losing her children to curable diseases. That has been losing her children to malnutrition. <coughs> the whole bunch of stuff. You know, this is 
what it is about. It is about collectively as a people, how do we develop this nation? And we cannot develop this nation unless we have democratic and civil leaders, leaders who are democratic enough to understand that democracy is not just um, it's not just a, a theoretical formulation. It's just not. It's not a. It's not another. It's just not another aesthetic. It is something that is profoundly connected to the everyday condition of the everyday human being. And unless it's, it, it, it is about that, then what do we know? What do we have? What we have is not a democracy. Because democracy cannot just be this word that we throw around. No, it has to affect us. It must be able to change us. It must be able to transform us. If our leaders are not transformed by the democratic ethos that be, by the narratives that, uh, that, that sent us the power of the masses, then what type of leader do we have? So this is very important, and I hope that um, the president listens to this, or people who listen to this reach out to him and prevail on him and tell him that let him honor the three-year contract that he had brokered with the Gambian people. You know, this is, this is deeper than the constitution or the laws of the land. The laws of the land might back you for five years, but your moral obligation, your moral responsibility, which trumps legalities, has called upon you to abdicate office after three years and to honor the agreement that you have with the Gambian people. Thank you very much and Happy New Year and have a prosperous 2019. Thank you.